So today I'm going to do something a little more technical than showing you some of the latest add-ons or plugins in Kodi. Um, this one is pretty important if you're using Kodi to stream content. Um, while not necessarily illegal in some countries, it, it may be down the road. Um, if you're using P2P options like torrents or anything, uh, something like A streams for sports streaming, you are technically sharing. So you can potentially get in trouble in that regard. There are reports of people getting served notices for using Kodi to stream content through torrents like uh, Pulsar, the add-on, and A streams as well. Uh, with that being said, if you're familiar with a VPN, this will be very you know, straightforward. If not, you know, you should be using a VPN to protect your identity a little bit here on the internet. It, uh, I've been using private internet access. I highly recommend it. It's, you know, it's a premium option, but it is dirt cheap. I think it's about 33 bucks for the entire year. So about three, three dollars a month, give or take. Uh, I'm going to show you how to install it today on the Fire TV. Uh, it's pretty easy on Windows Mac, uh, they're, they've got clients that you can download. The one that seems to be causing most trouble is the Fire TV. I finally put a tutorial together on my website here. If you, I'll leave the link in the description um, on how to go through it, but this video will do that as well. So we're going to get started. I hope you enjoy this. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask away. So if you've ever installed an app or an APK from a third party source on the Fire TV, you're probably well aware of this step. Um, just to make sure though, in order for this to work, we have to allow it the ability to install third party apps from unknown sources. So before you do anything with this tutorial, follow this, make sure this is enabled. Otherwise you're gonna have problems installing anything uh, moving forward. But I assume if you have Kodi already, you probably already have this completed. Just to be sure, I'm going to show you real quickly how to do this. Uh, I apologize, I've, it's kind of a lot more challenging trying to, trying to screen record the Fire TV, but uh, I pre-recorded a video and I'll try and walk us through this as fast as easy as possible. So from your home screen on the Fire TV, just scroll to settings. You're going to scroll over to system and then in system you're going to go down to developer options. In developer options you want to make sure ADB debugging and apps from unknown sources are on. From there, all we need to do is get our IP address, which you can go to about. Um, in here, you'll see network, and you just want the IP address right there. Everything else is pretty irrelevant. Uh, write that down. Make sure, make a note of it regardless. Uh, we'll be using it in the rest of the tutor tutorial throughout. So the first method, I'm going to show you how to use an uh, app called apps to fire to install not just private internet access, but any APK or app from your phone onto the Fire TV. Um, there's three things you're going to need to use this method, and one of them involves purchasing an app. Um, the app on my screen here that you see right here, it's called the Mouse Toggle for Fire TV. What this does is it essentially converts your Fire TV remote into a mouse, so you can scroll and, and uh, point and click and stuff like that. And the reason you need this is because the private internet access app, there's really no other way you can get around with uh, entering information um, and connecting to certain VPNs without this app. So you will have to purchase it from the Play Store. Um, I highly recommend it. It's, it's only about three or four dollars, but um, as you use it, uh, you'll find yourself using it more and more and more with not just the private internet access app, but uh, other apps as well. So the other two apps that you'll need is the private internet access app and the apps to fire. I'll show you how to install those or all three, but essentially what you'll need is an Android device with access to the Play Store. So open up the Play Store and we're going to search for private internet access. I've already entered it in, so mine's at the top here. So just search for private internet access and you'll see this little green dude uh, and VPN by private internet access. That's what you want to use. So we're going to open that and you'll see install on your device. Mine says open, so simply hit install. Once that's done, go back and this time we're going to search for apps to fire and search. And again, you'll see it's the top one at this list. I've already got mine installed. I'll just open it. So simply hit install in this one as well. 
And then finally, the last one we need to search for is the mouse toggle, as you'll see at the top here, mouse toggle for Fire TV. So open that. Um, I've got mine installed. I don't know what the price is, but I believe it's about four four dollars. It's it's under five dollars. It's again really the only way you're going to accomplish being able to use private internet access. Uh, well, unless that I know of anyways. So if someone else knows, please leave a comment below. But you'll need to be uh, using this. But again, it's a highly effective app for, for use on your Fire TV. So I highly recommend um, purchasing and using this. Now that you've got all three of those installed, go back to the home screen. And we're going to simply open Apps to Fire. When you first open it up, you'll be greeted with this screen called, uh, it's your local apps. So all the apps that are on your device. Um, what you'll want to do first though is you want to scroll over on the menu at the top here to setup and you'll want to enter in the IP address that we had written down in our previous step. So I've got mine in 192.168.1.67. Simply hit save and you'll see at the bottom it says IP saved. Now all you have to do is go back to the local apps screen and from here just find the apps that we've just recently downloaded. So we want to install the private internet access VPN. So I've, I've scrolled down here already, you'll find the little green dude again. So simply just click on it and you'll be greeted with this. We just need to install. And it will connect to your Fire TV. It's gonna go through the process of installing. Um, if this doesn't take too, too long, I'll let it run. Otherwise, I'll just cancel it here. It is already installed on my device, so installation failed. So I've already got it on there. Uh, as it said, it already existed. So the next thing you want to do is find the mouse toggle for Fire TV. So we want to open that and again just hit install. And again I've already got it, in, it uh, already installed on my device so it's failed. After that you're done with Apps Do Fire. You can close out of it and we'll move on to the Fire TV. All right, now that we are back on the Fire TV, um, it's pretty straightforward from here. Uh, you should see, if you scroll down to your apps menu on the left, you should scree see the little green dude, um, and that is private internet access. So what we need to do to get started is, all we need to do is simply scroll over to it and open the app on our Fire TV. So from here you'll be greeted with this screen and you'll have to log in first with your username and password. Um, as I mentioned, uh, it is a premium option so you'll have to purchase an account and they'll, they'll give you all this information as, as you know they typically would. Um, so what you wanna do is enter your username and password. You can use the Fire TV remote here uh, as intended, but after you log in, you're gonna need some form of mouse. Uh, whether that's the mouse toggle for Fire TV app I had mentioned previously, you can plug in a USB mouse to your Fire TV, I believe. I haven't tested it, I just found it easier to use the app. Not to mention, I wanted the ability to, say, lay on my couch and use the Fire TV as opposed to have a mouse at my hand all the time. Um, if you don't wanna spend the five bucks and you have a USB mouse laying around, you can definitely go that route. Um, but for this tutorial, we're going to show you how to use the mouse toggle for Fire TV app. So um, basically what you do to get that initiated is you'll double press the play button on your Fire TV remote and the toggle app will show up as this little uh, circle with like a blue tinge. So once, that's, once that shows up, you know it's enabled. So you're in mouse mode. So from there, you can use the up, down, left, and right directional pad on your Fire TV remote as a mouse, as you can see here. Um, you can enter in your user username and information using this mode or the Fire TV uh, default mode. So uh, go ahead and do that. Um, but if, if you wanna exit out of mouse mode, uh, or the exit out of the Fire TV toggle app, you just have to click play once on your remote and it will go back to functioning as it should as the Fire TV remote. Um, you may still notice that this circle is still there after you press the play button once, but if you press up or down or a button on your Fire TV remote, it should disappear. 
and and that's essentially all you're going to have to do to enable it both you'll you'll probably be switching back and forth between the two um, it may be easier initially just to use a usb mouse but like i say once you get the hang of it um, it's just so much easier than having a mouse plugged in all the time and having an extra remote or a mouse laying around just to to do these things so I'm gonna let you enter in your information, your username and password. I'm not gonna enter it in on this screen for security purposes, but once you do, just simply click login. You can uh, use the Fire TV remote or the mouse toggle as mentioned. Click login and I'll see you on the next screen. All right, so now that we've entered uh, in our information, you should be created to this, something very similar to this screen. I'm not sure why my screen record captured it in landscape mode or portrait mode, sorry. Um, but you should see the exact same thing. You've got private internet access at the top. This is the little settings button up here, which we'll get into here in a bit. But basically, you've got a toggle switch right here saying status disconnected. At the bottom, we've got current region is set to automatic. The original IP and the current IP should match as that's your current IP address that's been given to you from your uh, I internet service provider. Um, what we want to do, I've obviously, sorry, grade my IP out just for security purpose but what we want to do is we want to change the current region from automatic to the ability to select where we want our VPN to connect to. Um, the only reason for this is well there if you're just connecting randomly and, and don't care but uh, I typically sometimes need to connect to a VPN so I can watch in-game sports uh, sports teams for example so um, you may want to make it look like you're out of market uh, to watch things, but or you may want to choose a VPN that's closer to the source. If you're looking to, say, watch U.S. Netflix and you don't live in the U.S., you could probably connect via VPN. That's typically what, what it's for, aside from the uh, protection and security purposes. But anyway, so what we want to do is enable mouse mode. So to do that, again, we just double click the play button on the remote. You should see the little blue uh, circle here, as mentioned. So what we'll do is we'll scroll all the way down to the bottom and to the right here. Uh, slowly but surely, we'll get there. And you'll click that little drop down. So from here, we'll be given a drop down. We'll click that and we'll be taken into all the all the options we have for connecting to a VPN we can connect to in Australia, Brazil, Canada, et cetera, et cetera. So now that we're in mouse mode, um, all the US VPNs are down at the bottom. So if you want to scroll with mouse mode, you need to use the menu button on your remote, which will scroll up, and then the fast forward button underneath it will scroll down. So all we need to do from here is simply just hit the fast forward button and we'll be able to scroll down uh, as you see. So we're gonna scroll all the way down and pick a US VPN. So we're gonna choose California. And you'll be given this notification connection request. Uh, it wants to set up a VPN connection that allows it to monitor network traffic. Uh, only accept this. So because you're in mouse mode, you're probably going to have to exit out of mouse mode by hitting pl the play button once on the Fire TV remote. So from there, then just press down a couple times and you should be able to eventually, uh, it should highlight the OK or cancel. So once you do that, simply sit, hit the select button on your remote and hit OK. And now you'll be brought back to this screen where it's going to show that it's authenticating and now you're connected to your VPN and your original IP will stay the same, but your current IP now is going to change and you're connected, as you can see down here. There's the IP that's connected. Um, and that's basically it. Now, now you're connected to a VPN and your IP address is showing that you're in California. So as I mentioned, we're going to go take quickly take a look at the settings in, in here. There's a couple things you may want to change or adjust. So just scroll up there and hit this little gear icon. And we'll be greeted with some options here. Um, I've or blurred out my account, but the, the two most important options that I typically find is the internet kill switch right here. So when activated, the client will not allow unencrypted internet traffic. <clears throat> this I typically leave this on. Um, and that basically all this means is if you're 
if your VPN gets disconnected, then it's going to disconnect the internet or, or the stream or whatever, right? So it's not going to allow you to uh, watch content. If you're streaming something on a torrent, for example, uh, and the VPN disconnects, then the torrent's going to disconnect. And that's just an added level of security. Um, I, I do recommend it. Um, the other one up here is block local network. So if the VPN isn't connected, it's not going to allow local traffic. So if you've got uh, if you've got local media that you stream, then you may want to de-check this. Um, I, I typically just leave that off. So uh, those are two things that you may want to switch and play around with. The internet kill, kill switch. Um, I've had success with it, but some people have mentioned that it doesn't necessarily work as well on the Fire TV, but I haven't noticed anything where it, it hasn't worked for me. So it's one thing to keep an eye on if you're going to end up using it. And that's essentially it. Um, from there, uh, I, I just went back to my home screen on the Fire TV. As you see here, I just opened up a Chrome browser, which I installed on the Fire TV as well. And it automatically entered in the private internet access uh, website. So you can see at the top, you are protected by PIA. And, and that just shows that it does work. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It, it is a little over the top, but uh, I highly recommend investing in a, in a VPN moving forward. If you're using Kodi, Kodi quite frequently, if you're streaming sports uh, on your device, uh, that aren't necessarily legitimate. If you need ways around to get out of uh, certain sports blackouts, um, or if you're streaming torrents, it's it's just a great thing to have that will protect you in the future. If you have any questions, please, by all means, ask in the channel uh, below or in the comments. And of course, if you enjoyed these tutorials, please subscribe to my channel. I am going to show you another video that shows you how to set this up using ES File Explorer as well.